what's up everybody Jesse here LJ on farms today I want to talk to you a little bit about hay testing and uh, probably how it can save you quite a bit of money now, primarily what we're uh, trying to accomplish with hay testing is getting a protein and a TDN value or energy you think uh, you can think of the TDN as calories basically and uh, sometimes you also may look at some of the fiber values such as the NDF but primarily what we're looking for is protein and TDN or energy and together those two we can we can use to describe our hay quality so to speak now I think it's been estimated that uh, feed prices rose upwards of 20% in 2021 I think that's probably more so now because uh, it hasn't went down any it did there for a little bit and then come back up and it's slowly just been on the rise so getting some hay test quality especially especially if you're feeding a lot of hay can really have the potential to save you a lot of money when it comes to your feed bill and the reason this is is because it will allow you to get an accurate analysis of your hay and the quality that it contains and so you're gonna feed your hay as your primary source of feed for your livestock and then you're just gonna use your feed as your supplement to fill in the gaps where your hay quality may be lacking all right, so there's several different ways you can uh, take your hay samples. Some people can do it by hand. They, you can pull out certain spots here and there. I think a better option is a hay pro because it lets you get a, a really good representation of that wind row as a bell was being formed. And so I know the, the local, I use my local county extension, which is Oklahoma State University. I use them to do my hay testing. They do have uh, probes available for use. It's a push-in style. It has a uh, PVC on the end of it, PVC pipe, and those samples collect in there. And after you get so many samples, you just open it up, pour it in your bag or bucket or whatever. I got to the point where I was doing so many samples because I like to test, uh, I like to test my hay on a cutting. So I'll say my first cutting, I'll get a test, second cutting test, third cutting test. If I build other properties, I may test those as well. So I opted to uh, purchase my own hay probe. This is an oak field apparatus style. It has a serrated tip on the end, and this end goes in a drill. Uh, they also have hand drill styles, they have push in styles, pretty much anything uh, you can think of. But when you're doing a lot of bells and you're using that push in style, I can tell you, you're probably going to get a little bit of a workout. So I opted for the easy route. This also comes with a ram. So you basically Drill it in, pull it out, get your ram, push it in, and I highly recommend this open end down here. They sell them where they aren't, but you definitely want that to be able to expel your sample really easy. Now generally if I'm taking a lot of samples, I will use a five gallon bucket because I can throw my drill and the hay probe in the bucket and just take off walking and my sample bags. and. Uh, take my samples as I go uh, when I get some of the samples I need from that one cut I'll just I'll mix them together put them in the bag move on to my next and I can do all that within a five gallon bucket I don't have a five gallon bucket today I have this one gallon bucket and so what I will do is uh, OSU recommends at least 10 samples to get a good representation so I'll take my 10 samples uh, as that's a minimum you can take more but I will take my 10 samples as I'm going along, I will expel them into this bucket. And when I get all the samples I think I need, you'll mix them together real good. And then today I'm just using a regular old pla uh, paper sack. There are sample bags available. I don't have any on hand. I usually stop by and get some, but I haven't been by there in a while. But you can use paper sacks. Uh, you don't want to use uh, like Ziploc baggies, something that seals up real tight. Um, airtight moisture tight because if you do have some excess moisture in your hay it can cause some mold and stuff to form and you don't want that so like I said use the sample bags from the local extension office or paper sacks are another option and I will usually label them so what I'm testing today is I have a, a first cutting down this hay trap that I'm going to test and then behind me here I have a second cutting that I'm going to test and so like I said I test mine because it lets me get really close to the amount of supplement I'm going to need 
per head of cow. And the other thing is I sell my hay and I have somebody wanting to buy some hay. So I'm a little bit late testing this year, but I'm going to go ahead and test this so that when I do sell it, I know what it is and I can let the buyer know what it is and what those tests showed. And that just helps them out. They don't go, they don't have to do the hay test on their own and they have a better idea of what they need to feed their cows if they're going to have to feed their cows. Some hay you may get is uh, perfectly fine for say dry cows. That's cows that aren't nursing a calf. Um, and that, that kind of takes you into a whole nother area of cow nutrition that uh, could be a whole nother video in itself. But just know that it's a good idea to test your hay so you know where you stand and then you can fill in the gaps to meet your cows needs. So let me show you how I do this on the bell. And one thing you don't want to do is go in this way because you're only going to get a very small representation of that windrow. You want to come in from the round side and go towards the middle. I see a lot of people going in from the top, but if these bells are going to be setting for a long time, you basically just created a hole in that bell for water infiltration, and you can basically ruin your bell if you get enough moisture and rain. So I like to come down not so much level. If I can, I'll come down a little bit lower than center and drill up. And that way I really reduce my chances of any water infiltration into that bell. And this has a hay wrap on it, so I'll just spread that hay wrap enough to, uh, to get my tip of my probe in there. As you can see, I went ahead and kicked it up a notch had this tip on here for a couple years it may actually be time to uh, either try to resharpen that or just get a new one this is a replaceable tip so that's pretty cool and so then I'll just expel this into my bucket I want to do that about 15 more times and call it good it's probably not a bad idea to get multiple sa samples from each bell uh, that's only going to help your accuracy and the results I've got enough samples from this batch uh, I've got one more uh, cutting I'm gonna sample this is my first cutting so like I said I've combined got them all in this bucket here I'll just mix all that up good so it's nice and uh, what do they call that homogenous I think I haven't had uh, chemistry or biology in a long time I will pour that in my sack and then I will drop that off my local extension office and tell them what I'm looking for uh, there are quite a few options. I just go with the basic. I want to know the protein, the TDN, and I'm pretty sure you get moisture anyway. 
and there may be another one, NDF or ADF, one of those two, but there's, there's a basic level there that all those come with, and that's all I need. All right, so you've got your hay test done, you've got your protein and TDN content of your hay. Now what? What do you do with it? I will put some links down in the description below to uh, some free resources, a couple of spreadsheets that I like to use that let you uh, plug in your hay test, let you plug in the age, uh, the production cycle of your cattle, you know, where they're at. Are they heifers, grown heifers? Are they mature cows, dry mature cows? Are they, uh, you know, the weight? Weight is a big factor on intake. Uh, like I said, I will put the description below to some of those. But don't be afraid to uh, to use your local extension office. They uh, That's what they're there for. They can help you with this. They can take that hay test and say, you say you give them an idea of what your uh, your cattle are. Are they 1,200 pound mature cows that are dry? And they can say, okay, well you're going to need this amount of feed, or no nah, man, this hay is good enough. You don't need any feed. Just uh, give them free choice of mineral and salt, and you're good to go. But like I said, there's a lot of things that go into uh, into the needs of the cattle, age, uh, where they at in production, are they you know gestating? Do they have a calf, so they're having to provide milk? All those things, the weather, is it cold? Uh, all those things play into how much those cows are gonna need as a supplement uh, other than your hay. Like I said, if you have really good hay, you may not need any at all. And something else I wanted to touch on too, uh, maybe I should have said this in, in the beginning, but if you've reached this far, thanks for watching. Uh, but that is, a lot of times we get hung up on the protein content of our feeds and our hays, but TDN is just as important. So basically protein is going to feed the microbes in the rumen. Those microbes then in turn are able to break down the forages, whether they be hay or uh, you know fresh grass harvested off the pasture. So it's hard to talk about one with really considering the other. So I would consider you if, if in the past maybe you've just considered protein content you really need to consider TDN also and really learn how that TDN plays a role in the functioning of the rumen. TDN is basically calories it's the energy it's the energy required from that cow to survive to live to grow to produce uh, a calf and then once that calf is born the TDN in turn allows her to produce milk to feed that calf so it's just as important as protein but we've kind of lost that along the way and we've just kind of focused narrowly in on protein only but TDN is just as important so I just want to throw that in there all right y'all I think I'm gonna kind of wrap this video up I just wanted to go over real quick how I test my hay why I do it why I think it's a good idea and maybe kind of give you some different ideas to start thinking about in the future but uh yeah so uh hope you enjoyed this video hopefully that gave you some value uh, if it did be sure to hit that thumbs up Subscribe if you haven't, if that's something you want to do. Check out some of our other videos, and we'll see you on the next one.